In today's episode, we'll talk about the most common mistakes in nail extensions, what not to do to ensure your design is durable and visually appealing. Hi, my name is Connie, and this is a channel dedicated to the art of nail styling. Today, we'll show you the most common mistakes in nail extensions. It's the perfect episode for all our nail styling beginners. Products and tools we'll use in today's episode are cuticle bit number nine, a 100 to 180 grit buffer, gel brush number six, and easy shape light rose. We'll also need purple forms and a cupcake brush. Mistakes in nail styling can be divided into critical, which can make the nails structurally unstable or ugly, and minor, which slows us down, making us less productive and more tired. Sometimes we're completely oblivious to them, which is why it's good to attend training sessions, workshops, and courses and keep our knowledge up to date because nobody starts off as an expert and one or even a few training sessions will not suffice to make you a master. Remember that the industry continues to evolve and what we've learned three years ago might be updated this year even if we attend the same training session with the same instructor. In today's episode, we'll look at the most common mistakes which you might not even know you're guilty of. The first mistake is the inappropriate preparation of the nails for extensions. A sloppy manicure, an insufficiently buffed nail plate that is full of impurities. We work on the cuticles using the cuticle bit number nine. Working from right to left, we remove the cuticles and lift up the walls. We buff the natural nail plate with a 100 to 180 grit buffer. Then dust the nails off with a cupcake brush. The second mistake is not shortening the free edge. While shortening the nail, we hold the file perpendicular to the edge, then we round off the corners. A shortened free edge allows for a better application of the form. Cutting the form out in the shape of the free edge means we can fit it closer so that it aligns perfectly. If we don't shorten the edge and even out the corners, the form won't fit perfectly under the nail and you'll be able to see it sticking out. The third mistake is the incorrect cutting out of the egg on the form and incorrect side incisions. If we cut the form out too narrowly and look at it from the top, it will seem fine. However, if we look at it from underneath, we'll see that a gap has formed and the form doesn't align with the free edge as it should. On the other hand, if we cut the form too widely, there simply won't be enough of it at the sides. We will have to work in the air when applying the product and the structure of the nail would surely turn out incorrectly. We cut the side incisions on the form to commence the initial work on the tunnel of the extended nails. As a result of cutting the form, the sides of our nail, the side walls, don't tense up the form, allowing us to apply it perfectly under the free edge of the nail. The fourth mistake is a form that is incorrectly and unevenly closed under the nail. We must control the form in the moment of closing, ensuring it stays in place and doesn't go out of shape. An overly pinched form will end up thinner than the nail width, and we won't be able to build a proper frame. Unevenly stuck wings will make the form skew to one side. As a result, all of the auxiliary lines we use during the build will be wonky and the whole nail will end up crooked. The fifth mistake is applying the form at the wrong angle. We must remember the rules that apply when extending nails, what shape we want to achieve and how we're planning to apply the form depending on the condition of the nail plate. We're going to extend the nails into an almond. In the case of our model's hands, the form should come out straight because we'll be working up to number three on the form. The edge of the extended nail when looking at it from the side should match the level of the cuticles. This is the moment in which we need to use our imagination and visualize where the extended nail will end to see if the structure will be correct. Let's not assume that each client's forms will be applied the same way because each client's nail plates are different. It may even happen that one client's nail will differ so much from the left hand to the right or index fingernails, which tend to grow downwards, that we'll need to adjust the placement of the form every time, taking into consideration each nail's shape. That's precisely what makes us professionals. We're not doing factory work. We're not automating our work. We know what we're doing and we apply our knowledge to individual clients' needs to make the final result perfect for each and every one of them. 
If the angle of the form runs downwards like in the ring finger, then the edge of the nail will also end up lower. The edges won't be built correctly and around the stress point will create a so-called crease which will have to overlay with an awful lot of product. The sixth mistake is a sloppy application of product when building the frame. Chaotic and sloppy brushwork will make it difficult to build a proper nail structure. We need to place the gel neatly, carefully spreading the product along the free edge and reaching the edges of the natural nail plate nicely. Brushwork differs depending on whether we're working with jelly or self-leveling gel, but the final effect should not because the gel has to reach all the areas where it's needed. That's logical. Therefore, regardless, if we're working with jelly or a self-leveling gel, the areas that need the product are all critical for proper nail construction. The seventh mistake is different lengths of nails in a design set. To ensure all nails are of a similar length, we need to flip our client's hand place the nails together one by one and compare their length. At the product application stage, we can make corrections to the length by taking off the uncured product before putting our client's hand into the lamp. Once the product is cured, we can still make some corrections with a file, but we need to remember that the tunnel we pinched on a longer nail might look a little different because the pressure of the pinch dispersed differently. Keep this in mind and don't be surprised if when one nail was too long and you corrected it, but somehow it looks different in shape than the rest. Now you know why. The eighth mistake is using the wrong amount of product for the extension. Not enough material used in construction can result in nails being too thin after filing and thus prone to breaking. We can see the correct amount of product here on the middle finger. If we place too much product on the nail, we'll have problems filing it down to the desired shape and our work will take much longer. The ninth mistake is flooded cuticles. Light cured products can't touch the surface of the skin. It's a significant and potentially dangerous mistake. We should never let it happen. Why are we so careful not to flood the cuticles? Well, for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, for safety. Light cured products can cause allergies. When applied to the nail plate, only the risk is minimal, but applying it to the skin increases the risk. If you've ever seen an allergic reaction to gel styling or any other light curing product, there's a 99% chance it was styling done in a way in which the product ended up on the cuticles and that's where the allergic reaction occurred. The other thing is, if we cure this product, we'll have a problem even without an allergic reaction. When working on the product or when trying to take off the color cured on the cuticles, we can end up breaking the skin. We'll have to use a file to get rid of the already cured mass, and that's a very unpleasant process for the client. Simply put, don't do it. Just learn and aim to remember that a professional doesn't flood the cuticles. That is our goal. That is how we want to work. All done. That's what a properly constructed gel nail looks like. And that brings us to the end of our episode. Let us know in the comments below if some of these mistakes happen in your work or maybe not anymore. Or maybe you think of some other mistakes we didn't mention. Let's exchange some knowledge in the comment section below. And be sure to join us next Wednesday. See you then.